Hello students, welcome to An Academy, India's largest learning platform. I am Abhishek Datta. I did my graduation from IIT Roorkee and my MBA from Anandor. So in the previous video, we were studying the various shapes of the atomic orbitals, right? In this video, we'll look at the different energy levels and why is the energy level important. So with this note, let's begin our learning session. Hello students, welcome to An Academy once again. So this video is about the energies of the various orbitals which we have been studying about. I am Abhishek Datta, you already know about me, so let's begin this. So we'll be taking up 5 topics of discussion. Firstly, we'll discuss why is the energy level important and what are the energies of the various orbitals in an increasing order. Next, we'll study what is known by the screening effect or the shielding effect. Thirdly, we'll try to memorize the uh, the increasing order of the energies of the orbitals and a very good principle for that is the Aphau principle a way to remember this right next we'll study the Pauli exclusion principle and we'll finish it off with the Hunt's rule of maximum multiplicity these all three rules are very important rules so please pay attention let's begin with our first topic which is the energies of orbitals now as a special note I just wanted to mention that the orbitals which have the same energy are known by the name as degenerate orbitals right so any orbital if both of those orbitals have the same energy we known we call by that name degenerate orbitals so what is the difference between the energies of the various orbitals the energy of an electron in a multi electron atom depends both on its principal quantum number which is the shell number for example 1 2 3 4 5 and so on as well as its azimuthal quantum number which is the subshell number, right? S, P, D, F, which is denoted by the letter small l. So th these two numbers, which will, these two are the only numbers you will require to arrange all the orbitals in an ascending order. And this is the arrangement of the orbitals. So if you start from the lower energy and rise to the higher, higher energy part, say suppose the nucleus is somewhere over here. So the first orbital will be over here, which is the 1s. The next energy level will be the second orbital. Firstly the 2s and then the 2p. Then comes the chance for third orbit which is the 3s. Then it is 3p but incidentally firstly 4s will come and then only the third orbit will be finished. So this anomaly over here there are a lot of different anomalies and lot of rules are there. So the only rule which you want to remember is this rule not this diagram. So if you remember this rule you can uh, you can draw this diagram easily right. So what does the rule say? This is known by the L n plus L rule. So lower the value of n plus L. What is n and what is L guys? n is the quantum number, principal quantum number. L is the azimuthal quantum number. So lower is the value of n plus L of an orbital. The lower is its energy. It is as simple as that. You just need to calculate the n plus L values for all the orbitals. And whenever you find uh, the n plus L to be lower, you can say that the energy of that orbital is also lower. But what if the n plus l is same for two orbits? So in that case, to break the tie, we have this rule over here. If two orbitals have the same values of n plus l, the orbital with the lower value of n, so preference will be given to n now, which is the principal quantum number. The uh, orbital with the lower n will have the lower energy. So these two rules make up the n plus l rule, right? So if you find if you find that even the n plus l rule is very difficult for you to remember. There is another rule which is the Aufbau principle and there is a diagram in the Aufbau principle right which we'll study in this video. So no required even to remember this rule. So you can remember the Aufbau diagram and easily you can remember what is the order of the increasing energy of the different orbitals right. So this was our discussion about the energies and how they are arranged in an increasing order of the energy and why is this increasing order important we'll study that in the Aufbau principle. So let's move on for now guys let's move on to what is meant by screening effect or the shielding effect this is a very simple effect guys so what is screening effect so due to the presence of the electrons in a multi electron atom the inner shells right there will be electrons present in all the shells from the innermost shell to the outermost shell so the electron in the outermost shell will not experience the full positive charge on the nucleus why is that so because of the inner electrons guys so the say suppose there is a electron which is very very far away it is at the last shell and it is very far away from the nucleus 
So there are two forces acting on that last electron. It is the attractive pull of the central nucleus, which is very far away, as well as the repulsive forces of the inner electrons, right? So these two are the forces. And uh, the net effect will be that the total positive charge on the nucleus won't be able to attract the last new uh, last electron with as much force as it would attract the first electron in the very first shell, right? So that is why the last electrons are shielded off from the effect of the uh, inner nucleus. This is why this is known as screening effect. So due to the screening effect, the net positive charge experienced by the electron from the nucleus is lowered and is known as the effective nuclear charge. So uh, effective nuclear charge will be there because the last electron won't be able to feel the full force of the positive nucleus. Right guys? So therefore it will be lesser than the uh, Z and it will be known as Z effective. So this was the shielding effect guys. Let's move on now to the above principle. So the much awaited above principle. So what is this magic principle which helps us to remember, remember the order of the increasing order of the energy, right? So this is the principle I have been talking about. This is the diagram which is very simple to draw. So before moving on to the diagram, let us see what Mr. Avbao says over here. So what is Avbao over here? It says in the ground state of the atoms, the orbitals are filled in order of their increasing energies. So the only thing for us to find is the increasing order of the energies. And if you can find that order, you can start filling electrons. Whenever you want to find the electronic configuration of an atom, you need to know how many electrons are present in which orbital, right? So to find out the electronic configuration, you need to start to fill up the electrons. And how will you start to fill? You will start to fill in the order of the increasing energies. So this in, that is why this increasing energies of the orbitals are so important to us. Okay, so let us come to this diagram now. What is this above diagram? So you can see that the first level over here is the first orbit, right? So the first orbit will have only two orbitals, which is 1s. The second orbit will have 2s and 2p. And so on the third will have 3s, 3p and 4d, 3d, sorry. Similarly, the fourth one will have 4s, 4p, 4d and 4f. The fifth one will have four orbitals and the sixth one will have three and the seventh one will have two. So these are the possible orbitals, guys. You already know how to find out the uh, orbitals. Okay, so how do we find the increasing order of the energies now? You just need to follow this arrow. So this is the first arrow which you will draw. So this is the second arrow. This is the third arrow. This is the fourth arrow. Then this arrow, guys. Then this arrow. Now what is the meaning of this arrow? It means that you will start off with this arrow first. Which means that the 1s orbital will be first filled. And then you need to follow this arrow. So this arrow is hitting 2s first. Hence next is 2s then you need to follow this arrow the third arrow then the first then the next one will be 2p after that we'll have 3s then the next arrow you have to follow you have 3p and 4s so i've written the order in this last statement you can just follow this so we have 1s over here which is this right then we have 2s and 2p so 2s and 2p and then we have 3s right so this is how you use this diagram you just need to draw these sort of arrows and follow these arrows one by one and we need to start filling them up in the order of their increasing energies so i've repeated the n plus one n plus l rule over here you can remember either this rule or you can remember either this diagram for me this diagram is much more simpler than remember this rule okay so this is why i would prefer you to remember this diagram rather than remember this rule this is very simple to draw in the examination and you won't be required to uh, find out what is the you won't be required to actually remember this order you can just find out the order using this diagram this diagram right so that is why this above principle is very important and this diagram is even more important so let's move on guys we have the Pauli exclusion principle so this is the second last thing which will we do so what are what is the Pauli exclusion principle guys it says no two electrons in an atom can have the same set of four quantum numbers so we have studied about the four quantum numbers and each and every electron it needs to have its own four sets of quantum numbers it means that each and every electron will be depicted by a unique set of these four numbers it is like an address code and a single address code can be occupied by only one single electron so this is what Pauli, mr Pauli, has said over here only two electrons may exist in the same orbital so if you take any orbital you can find that only 
two electrons are present in that maximum of two and these two electrons must have the opposite sign which we studied in the last video as well right the opposite sign is clockwise sign and the anti-clockwise sign for example let us take up an example to solidify our concept so subshell 1s over here it comprises of only one orbital okay and thus the maximum number of electrons present in 1s subshell can be 2 because each orbital can have only two uh, maximum electrons for example if you take p orbitals now it has three orbitals in p subshell right and each orbital over here can take up two electrons that is why the maximum number of electrons can be six for the p subshell let us take the d subshell now it has five orbitals and five into two ten maximum electrons can fit into the d subshells okay so this can be summed up as the maximum number of electrons in the shell with principal quantum number n is equal to n square so if you have the principal quantum number n the maximum number of electrons in that particular shell n is equal to 2 n square so you can remember this small rule so this was the Pauli exclusion principle which said we need to have each uh, electron needs to have its own set of unique four quantum numbers let's move on to the last rule which is the Hun's rule of maximum multiplicity so Hun's rule is again an important rule so it says pairing of electrons in the orbitals belonging to the same subshell now before we read the rule let us take up the example first of all so say suppose you have the orbitals over here s has one orbital p has two orbital and d subshell has five orbitals and this is how you denote right each box over here is an orbital so that is why this is how you represent it so whenever you are trying to fill this up say suppose you want to uh, uh, fill up the p orbitals you are taking this as an example example of p orbital and there is only one electron in the p orbital p subshell sorry so in this we have three orbitals to fit so which orbital do you think guys will be you uh, filled up first this is where mr hunt comes so he's saying that fill it up only one electron per orbital so if you have one electron fill it up on the first one if you have two do not pair this up because it can have two i know it can have two maximum but you need to fill it up in the next one Similarly, if you have three electrons, fill it up in the next one. Only when you are done with three electrons, then only the pairing will start. So from the fourth electron onwards, this is the first orbital which will have a paired electron, right? And thus, if you take this example, these two will have paired electrons. And if you take this example, these three will have paired electrons. So let us read the rule now, Hun's rule. Pairing of electrons, which means this thing, pairing of electrons in the orbitals belonging to the same subshell. Right, we are talking about the p subshell over here does not take place until and unless each orbital belonging to that subshell has got at least one electron that is it is singly occupied so each orbital has to be singly occupied at least once for pairing to begin which means only after three electrons are introduced will the fourth electron enter into a, a already existing orbital okay so this is what fun hunt's rule over here says so these were the rules guys let's summarize quickly what all we learned we studied what is the definition of degenerate orbitals same energy or of orbitals will lead to degenerate orbitals okay we studied about the n plus l rule but i would suggest you to remember the above diagram as well we then we studied about a few rules as well okay so the first rule was the above principle we studied about the Pauli exclusion principle as well and we studied the Hun's rule so you can read this up if you have forgotten to revise right and we also studied about the screening effect so this was the summary guys thank you for listening to me in this video in the next session we will be taking up the topic of the electronic configuration of atoms this is again the most important section in this chapter so please pay attention in the next video as always if you enjoy watching my videos you can follow me over here and ask me any doubts if you have in the comment section thank you guys take care bye bye